Welcome back everybody and today I wanted to show you a little bit about these peerless transparent watercolors that I bought. I thought they were really cool. I saw them on someone else's channel and I wanted to experiment with them. I'm using my Vision watercolor paper. It is just like a student grade 140 pound and I'm just going to go through each color swatch and make a little test swatch of it. I think these paints are really great um, for traveling and um, just maybe to keep in your purse and you want to do a little bit of a watercolor sketch somewhere if you have a little time. Um, they don't take up much room at all. All you need is like a little brush. One of those paint brushes with the water inside already would do really great with this. So here I am, I'm putting, I'm starting off very neat, but I get really sloppy because I'm just having fun with it. But um, I'm noticing right away that the colors are very vibrant. And um, I really like that. They're almost like the Dr. Martin's uh, liquid colors they remind me of. They're so vibrant. Um, I was really surprised by that actually. So of course I spread this section up because um, I didn't want to bore you to tears while I wrote down in my very sloppy handwriting what each color was. And um, yeah, so I think that when you get a new set of watercolors, you should always do a little swatch um, painting so you know what each color uh, represents from each brand. So I'm really finding that if you just take a teeny bit of water and you wet this little peerless uh, swatch paper, you get a lot of color out of it. It's just amazing to me. I, I'm very surprised. I thought it would be not as vibrant and not as uh, thick and you know it, it getting as much paint out of it as I as you can see here um, and the colors are absolutely beautiful so I'm actually really impressed with these peerless paints so this is pretty much the end of my very neat paint swatching the rest of the paper is going to be uh, just a fat mess um, I'm just going to have fun with the paints and um, I decided I'm going to paint a little pumpkin right in the middle So I just wanted to try out these Peerless watercolors. I was not being endorsed to use these at all, but I wanted to give you the price of it. I looked it up and the small bonus pack, which is this one, um, ha is around $22, which is pretty reasonable. Of course, there's shipping and taxes or whatever. And the larger 
um, bonus pack is the same colors I believe and the papers are twice as big so I am really happy that I got these I'm going to put them in my backpack um, when I go travel around it's going to be in there ready to go I felt that a lot of the greens were pretty similar. There were some yellowish greens and some bluish greens. Um, there's a peacock, uh, greenish blue, but some of those were kind of similar and um, I like the hunter's green a lot and the darker ones. Um, but I think that we tend to use a lot of greens in our landscaping and we'll probably run out of those pretty quickly so it's actually a good thing. Um, but you of course can mix some greens with the blues and the yellows. The reds range from like a blood red to a scarlet and there's a few really pretty pinks in there and that one I just smudged um, was kind of on the more um, warm side of maybe looking a little bit more salmon color I would say. I just want to thank everybody who's here that's been watching me since I started this during the pandemic. I work um, part-time as an art director in a um, granola food company and I am the one and only art team there and I do all the packaging and the illustrations and the social media and the web design so I literally do everything and I've been in the field for over 30 years and mostly package design for some major brands like Big Low Tea and Pilot Pen and I've done work for Perrier and um, I'm really proud of my accomplishments but right now as I'm getting older I love teaching and I would rather do this so I really appreciate all of your subscriptions and your beautiful comments because it just encourages me to keep creating videos for you and you should leave some comments about what you'd like to see so I can do procreate I also teach on skillshare.com so you can look me up over there and um, I appreciate all of you and I thank you so much for being here. There's a variety of gorgeous blues and um, I like that there is like a turquoise and a peacock and um, yeah and I think uh, the purples, there's just a few purples in this pack and they're absolutely gorgeous as well. And there was only one dark color, there was no black, but there was a neutral tint. It really, uh, I think it reminds me of a Payne's Gray pretty much. So that was the only dark color but you can absolutely mix your darks with, the, with this set.
collection that we are going to be doing and I listed the colors here you can pause this and write down the colors and you could find similar colors for any paint set that you have to follow along So I just made a very light pencil drawing of a pumpkin and some leaves. And what I'm gonna do is grab my flat brush. Now in this painting, we're gonna use the flat brush, a number four round, and there's a little smaller uh, round that I'm using for details. And then I have my flat sponge on the side there and maybe three wells of water to clean my brush out. Um, I just wanna do a quick little painting for you of a pumpkin, because I actually really like those oranges. So, and it's getting close to fall, so maybe you want to paint a pumpkin too. I'm taking my flat brush and I'm just painting all the way around my pumpkin to start a uh, background color. Just pop in a background color there. Now I wanted it to be a different blue than I actually picked. The color blue I picked was the peacock blue and I thought, uh oh, I should have grabbed um, a different color blue. But when I looked at it, I thought, you know what, that's kind of a pretty blue. We'll just leave it and it's pretty intense. So, um, But we're going to dab some other colors into it. So I grabbed some of that lightest yellow color that I had and I just dropped some into that background and I added it to the leaves and I added it to the foreground underneath the pumpkin. And it's not very neat. So the marks I made under the pumpkin, I used the side of my brush to make it look like straw, maybe some leaves and straw and just organic matter that's under the pumpkin.
So make sure everything is dry before you go on to your next step. So I want to make sure that when I start painting the edge of the pumpkin, it's not going to bleed into my background. I'm just grabbing my lightest. Um, the next colors that I had were that uh, orange color, but it's actually a yellow, but it has an orangey tint to it. And also the other chrome, there's a chrome orange and a chrome yellow. So I like both of those. And I'm just kind of using those back and forth. And then there's the scarlet. I'm using that as well. And I'm just trying to show the ribs inside the pumpkin shape and I'm um, going pretty quickly, it's wet on wet, and I always tell my students, it's like you're, you're painting fast, but go slow. <laughs> so you're, you want a quick action there, but you want to go, you want, it, you want to have your paint kind of wet and not drippy wet, and you need to move pretty fast but yeah, take your time when you make your strokes. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So I just keep adding some of that reddish color into the ribs and since my painting is still damp it's going to it's going to keep blending and then I added some more water very little water from this um, flat brush and I keep adding and trying to lightly blend those edges that I put down in those ribs. Now you want to keep the left corner of your pumpkin is the lighter 
uh, where the light's coming from and the bottom right is going to be a little bit darker to show where the sun is coming from. So I just showed you this chrome green. So I think when I put those swatches out, I picked the wrong color green that I thought I used. So I used chrome green. Um, and But I, like I said, these greens were very similar. So it was very similar to the grass green or to maybe the viridian. Um, so, but it doesn't matter. You just want a uh, medi medium color green that looks like grass green or not too dark and not too light and um, it's sort of a neutral green. It looks very much like a grass green, doesn't it? So I'm just going to plop it here right inside the stem and um, you know, pretty neat, but I know I'm going to go in there and fiddle around around the bottom of that stem later. So, um, And I'm also going to add some of this green down below and into the leaves. A lot of times when I'm painting, I want to put in my darker colors midway through the painting. This way it helps you figure out where your lightest lights are and how to judge the rest of the values of the painting. So I'm going to put this shadowy color down under the pumpkin. I use the brown color, which is I think a burnt umber. And I'm using strokes to make it look like it is straw. I'm not super neat. I'm just using sort of calligraphic lines and um, you know your kind of own handwriting here and um, I really just want it to blend some of those little lines are going to be sharp and some of them are going to be a little blurry you add a little bit of more water and it really helps your eye to um, blend it in together and even though this is a representational painting it's not super realistic
So I grabbed that red and I did the same thing. I added some more um, line work underneath there and I'm going to grab the green and go on top of that because the two will cancel each other out and you'll have a very dark color. Here I'm taking the back of my brush, it has a sharp edge on it, and I'm making some lines. And that's going to create the paint to kind of fill in those lines and actually accentuate the idea of the straw underneath the pumpkin. So I added that grass green or whatever that green was that I used um, to all of my leaves, but I left out the light side of that top leaf. So the, the leaf is sort of folded over. So the inside of the leaf is actually darker in color than the, out the outside of the leaf was a little bit lighter on the pumpkin leaves. that hunter green and also a little bit of that red just to show the idea of um, veins and some shadow areas within the leaf.
Now we're going to start adding the details. I added some browns and hunter green to the stem to show that they are, uh, it's very sculptural, the stems, aren't they, on pumpkins? They, they're kind of cool looking and um, you just want to get it looking like it's, you know, the pieces are sticking out and, and the shadow parts are uh, receding back.
So like a lot of my paintings, I always come back and I add final details to the painting. My stem was dry at this point and I'm just going to go back and add some more ribs and maybe I will take my brush and um, put some water next to that rib so that it softens up or maybe I'll leave some harsh. And it's a good idea to have that um, combination of soft and hard and um, you know light and dark and it really helps your painting really look special. I don't usually do this, but I decided to use some uh, opaque white, and this is, I think it's an ink from Windsor Newton, and um, I am just adding those little, you know when you see a pumpkin stem, it has those little white dots on the stem, and I'm going to add some highlights to the top part of the pumpkin itself, just to show that the light's hitting that um, area a little bit more. I'm going to soften it up too with, with some water. Here I added white to the yellow ochre, Peerless, and I'm just going to add some more of that straw underneath the pumpkin just to make that stand out. And I'm also going to add it on top of the pumpkin because, you know, of course the straw would be on top of the pumpkin in a few places as, low, as well as below it.
and I added a little bit of that white to the um, green and I'm just going to add some veins here and there on the leaves. mop brush that I had it's like a Japanese uh, calligraphy brush or something like that but I spread it the hairs apart and I put very little paint on it was very dry and I just added texture to the side of the pumpkin to make it look like maybe some of it is not quite ripe yet and also I put some orange on the other side the same way and this concludes this painting I hope you enjoyed it please like and subscribe to my channel so I can bring you more um, painting tutorials and other art tutorials. Thank you so much. Goodbye.